four, three. Hi, GER here in beautiful Jamaica. You might be hearing some tree frogs in the background here in the studio. Some of those tree frog noises made their way into my music. You can probably hear it if you listen for it. I'm sitting here with, uh, beside an artwork by my friend, the artist Baron Claiborne, brilliant, brilliant artist. And this studio is a creative space where I find a natural resting state. So what is that resting state all about? It's about resilience. This is a little grab for you guys on the word resilience because a number of people have written to me asking how do you find resilience in your life to sort of find your way through some of the terribly stressful things that have happened to you. So resilience, what does it mean and where does it come from? Once again, you know what I do, I, I tend to go back to the root of the word, to its etymology to find out, you know, what is the essence of that word? The word resilience was first coined, in a sense, by Francis Bacon, a scientist, who was using it to describe the capacity of a substance, let's say a metal rod, to return or jump back to its natural resting state after being exposed to a stress, like ex excess heat or something like this. So the word resiliare meant to jump back, and he used that word resilience to describe the jump back ability of any substance. So if we put it into personal terms, what we can see here is that there are two things. If we work on this definition of the word for the moment, of course, in modern terms, resilience means the ability, generally, I would say it's accepted as the ability to adapt to stressful change and um, to adapt positively to stressful change. So if we go back to this scientific term of the jump back ability and the resting state, there are two things. There's the jump back mechanism and there's the resting state. So let's take a look at the resting state first. If your resting state, if my resting state, our resting state, is one of anxiety, of insecurities, of low self-esteem, if we jump back, even if we use a fantastic mechanism in, in order to jump back after a stressful event to our natural state, we'll really just be jumping back into another anxiety state. And so the composition of our resting state is vitally important. If we're jumping back to that negative state, we're probably going to start the kind of circle that becomes known as a vicious cycle or a vicious circle. So the composition of it is critically important. Let's look at that resting state. If our resting state is one of good self-esteem based on a, a reasonable appraisal of our strengths, our weaknesses, and of our good qualities, and a fair understanding of our not-so-good qualities, if our resting state has self-confidence based on a realistic appraisal of what it is that we have to offer in the world and what it is that we have to be careful about. For me, in my case, I shouldn't drink alcohol because if I do, I'll drink all of it. Um, you know, I shouldn't take heroin because if I do, I'll take all of it. And I, I know this and I'm not interested in either one. Now I've reached a point in my life where for decades I haven't thought of either one. So in this way, we, we can look at a resting state as being self-confident, have good self-esteem, as having a realistic understanding of our relationships with others, um, positive relationship with nature, with other people. If we don't have, we look at our natural resting state and we don't have that, that's what we need to build. We need to be with people who help us to build our self-esteem, to build our self-confidence, to build our capacity to fulfill ourselves and to shape our own destiny, to take our future in our own hands. So the resting state that you bounce back to after a stressful event is critically important to resilience. How resilient you are is, also, is not just dependent on how quickly or how brilliantly you can bounce back from an event, it's what you bounce back to. So building up your resting state is critically important. The other aspect of it is the jump back, rest of the hour, to jump back to that resting state. What techniques do we use? Yoga and meditation are excellent. They almost immediately, for practitioners of yoga and meditation, exercise um, an, an enormous control over autonomic responses, the things that we don't normally control that easily, our respiration rate, our heart rate, our perspiration rate, things like this. Yoga and meditation help us to get um, very quickly into a state where we are controlling those responses in our body, and that can be a, enough sometimes to jump us back into a resting state, into a well-composed resting state. Going for a walk in the country can also be effective to do this. 
playing with an animal, um, a cat, a dog, um, this can be something that helps us to get out of where we were, and which was hammered by some stressful event or some stress, and we can get out of that into a resting state that, oh yes, that's where we were. Now remember, the resting state is exactly where you were before the stressful event. And before that stressful event, you were fine. If you worked on your resting state and you were sort of well composed, you feel reasonable about, your, about yourself, you look in the mirror and say, it's not the best in the world, but it'll do. I can make this work. And you feel okay. And you feel I haven't let people down. I'm, I'm grateful for what I have. I'm thankful as a person. It gives me some peace with the world. And I'm devoted to somebody or something. It gives me some peace within. If your resting state is strong enough, that bounce back mechanism that you use can be many, many things and so on. So here we go. Meditation and yoga, going for a walk in the country, playing with an animal, diverting yourself in another way, a creative pursuit and so on. There are a number of others. For some people, simply going to another person and expressing how they feel about this stressful event that's, that's impacting them is sufficient. Just sharing it is enough sometimes for them to get, within a few minutes, they're back into that natural, calm, resting state that is not so affected by that stressful event. So developing your own and honing your own jump-back mechanisms is critically important. If there are any Trekkies out there, any people who are interested in Star Trek, I can tell you the one technique I used, having had to deal with huge amounts of stress for decades, pe literally people dying in front of me, or people trying to kill me, so having to deal with this kind of thing, I used to env envisage a kind of transporter where I would beam myself into another place. I would imagine my body changing, as soon as I was alone enough to do this, I would imagine my body changing into molecules, into atoms, dispersing itself and reassembling itself in a much nicer place. And I'd beam myself to somewhere else. Over time, I found that I didn't need to use the transporter mechanism. It was enough to just put myself into a state where I could focus on a bright light, close my eyes, focus on a bright light in front of me, small at first, but gathering in intensity. And the light was sufficient to take me out of where I was. So developing those things is important. Another little skill that I learned along the way was, as a fugitive, quite often you're dealing with authorities. I, I had to pass many times through customs controls with a false passport. I was interrogated by the police dozens of times. What you have to do and learn to do as a fugitive is to control your, control your perspiration, your respiration, your eye response. You can't let your eyes go left and right too much. You can't, they're watching and they're very smart. They know what they're doing. They're very well trained and they're very smart. So they'll pick it up instantly. If any of the signs that you're giving off are stressful, they'll pick it up. So what we have to do in that kind of life is learn to control and take absolute control so you're not perspiring even though fear makes you want to perspire. Your heart rate, rate is slow even though fear wants to make it jump out of your chest. And your breathing and your respiration and the way that you conduct, conduct yourself in your speech is calm and controlled even though you want to go, oh no, get me out of here, and so on. So that experience in my life gave me something of that control that I've used to help me to build some resilience in my life. I hope these little techniques can help you thinking about it in this term, these terms, how can I compose a resting state that's strong enough to support me no matter what stressful event happens, and they will happen to all of us. And secondly, what kind of jump back mechanism works for me? What is the thing that helps me to jump back into that calm resting state that I was in only one minute before that stressful event sent, that plunged me into stressful anxiety? So I hope that helps. A little thing on resilience, a little grab on that. I hope it helps you. And please keep these questions coming, all right? They're really important for me because they also help me to remember how important some of these things are that I myself just take for granted from time to time. So big love and blessings from Jamaica. GDR out. One love.